So my interview today ended up having to get rescheduled, but I still wanted to make a video for you guys today, and there was something really interesting that happened. Uh, it was basically just a word salad of delicious search engine optimization keywords. <laughs> Elon Musk, owner of Tesla, said that Tesla bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin back in January, and he also said that Tesla is going to be accepting Bitcoin as payments for their cars. And Tesla's in the S&P 500, which means that anyone who owns shares in the SPY owns a little bit of Bitcoin, basically. So we've done a whole bunch of interviews on Bitcoin on this channel, but I wanted to talk about Bitcoin, sort of framing it in the recent news that happened. So first of all, any positive news for Bitcoin is good for Bitcoin, right? The more companies that accept it as a intermediary of value, as something that uh, you can perform transactions with, the more its utility goes up, the more its utility goes up, the higher the value of the coin. Um, and every time a company announces that they're going to accept Bitcoin, that's more publicity for Bitcoin. More people want to invest in it, and that makes the value go up. And however, I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that Bitcoin is going to replace the U.S. dollar and is going to become the, the major uh, source of transactions. Now, it doesn't have to, mind you. I'm not saying that Bitcoin is going to be completely worthless, and I also think that it's personally going to go up in value. However, I don't think it's going to replace the U.S. dollar. Uh, whether you spend $60,000 in cash or $60,000 in Bitcoin for your new Tesla, you're still spending $60,000 worth of currency at the point of transaction. And Bitcoin is easily exchanged between U.S. dollars and Bitcoin, so there's no friction really that's there. So if I had $60,000 in cash, I wish, and I had $60,000 in Bitcoin, I also wish, then I could just as easily spend the $60,000 in cash and buy my Tesla. Then I could also just spend the $60,000 in Bitcoin and buy my Tesla and then refill my Bitcoin wallet with cash because, like I said, there's no friction there. It's, it's really easy to transform between the two. And if you're worried about the fact that your Bitcoin is going to go up in value, it doesn't matter because you're still spending $60,000 worth of X at the point of transaction, and uh, then you can go back to you know speculating on the value of Bitcoin. And regardless of what currency you spend, uh, your Tesla is still going to depreciate in value over time because it's a car. So even if we put aside the whole market volatility issue of Bitcoin, there is an inherent weakness in Bitcoin itself, and that's the speed of the transactions and the fees involved. You see, Bitcoin has to be verified by the network. And that takes a considerable amount of time, and it's built into the actual like Bitcoin protocol itself. And as the demands on the network increases, the fees on those particular transactions go up because you have to spend fees in order to get your transactions prioritized by the network. And so the more people that demand transactions, the more expensive it'll become. So Visa can verify transactions hundreds of times faster than Bitcoin can, and they do so at a flat rate. So there's a lot more utility in that particular space. Uh, however, there are some third-party transaction network software type companies that uh, will basically bundle transactions of Bitcoin together uh, in order to reduce the strain on the Bitcoin network. So that could be revolutionary for Bitcoin and uh, could prove me wrong. But the continuous upside of Bitcoin is that if major banks like, you know, your bank or Visa decide that they don't want to do transactions with Tesla, then you could do transactions with Tesla through Bitcoin because there's no one to prevent you from doing so. It's a distributed network. There's no central authority that uh, can make those kinds of decisions. Our CEO, Clem Chambers, loves him some DeFi and some crypto, and uh, I'll link some of those videos down in the description. And he chats about uh, those topics in the macro sense and in the real world sense. He talks about some of the ways that he's investing in it. He talks about some coins and some uh, tokens that he's looking at and things like that. If you're interested in learning more about the nitty gritty of how it works, I'll link a video down in the description that we didn't make, but I found and I really, really liked. So on to another cryptocurrency that Elon has been pouring a lot of his Twitter energy into. It's Doggy Coin or Doge Coin or whatever. Uh, it uh, has 10 x since late January. It uh, was trading at eight tenths of a penny and then it went up to eight cents each. And then it went down to three cents a few days later, but now it's back up at eight cents. 
To the uninitiated, I say with my barely surface level understanding of cryptocurrency, Dogecoin is not like Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin has a finite number of coins that will ever exist. Dogecoin does not. There's an infinite number of coins. Transactions happen a lot faster. A lot more new coins get poured onto the market. It, it was basically made as a meme or a joke back in 2013, uh, except that joke is now worth $10 billion and uh, is a top 10 cryptocurrency. <laughs> So tomorrow we'll be talking to Ted Ohashi about what's going on in the cannabis industry. If you like our content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment down in the descriptions what you think about the future of cryptocurrency and DeFi is. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs>